Hi, this is Maggie from Design Code Debug Repeat. Welcome to the channel. This video and the others in the Chapter 5 Problem Solving with Python playlist are an introduction to the concepts you will need to write programs with functions. This video accompanies Problem Solving with Python Chapter 5, but it's okay if you don't have the book. The videos stand alone as instruction on these topics. In the last video, we introduced the idea of functions. We talked about how to write and call or invoke a simple function, and we talked about how functions alter the flow of control in a program. In this video, we'll talk about how to specialize functions with parameters and how to return values from functions. With these features, functions become immensely useful for designing reusable components into our programs, making our programs shorter, less prone to error, and easier to read and debug. Let's dive in. In the last video, we started to write a text adventure game, which I have open here. In this game, we've written functions that print the descriptions for each of the locations. This keeps the code that drives the game simpler, because there isn't a lot of text and print statements mixed in with the logic. So the structure of the game is easier to see. The functions are named well, so the code that displays the description is easy to read. It's this if elif elif statement here, and you can see if location equals field, print field description, elif location equals wood, print wood description, and the same for settlement. If there were more locations, there would be more elif statements, and it's quite easy to understand. Now, the code below the description is a little more complicated. Let's look at that for a moment, because we can make the entire program a lot simpler, more modular, and easier to add to if we can eliminate this complicated code below. This code asks the user what direction they want to move in, and then changes their location depending on both where they are and the direction they choose. So if they choose to go south, for example, if they're in the field or the wood, then they fall in the river. But if they're not, if they're in the settlement, then they move to the field. Our map is incredibly simple. There are three locations, and two of them are sort of magical. You can always go east in the wood and still be in the wood, and somehow right next to the field if you go west. And you can always go north in the settlement and still be in the settlement and go south to the field. So this is an incredibly simple map, and yet the logic for moving around is already looking pretty complicated. Suppose we were able to separate out the locations so that each one handled movement for itself. So in other words, there's no central wall of logic determining where to go based on where we've been. There are distributed, much simpler bits of logic that are specific to where we are. So if we're in the field, if the player's chosen north, we're going to the settlement, south, they're going in the river, east, they're in the wood, west, they're still in the field, but attempted to go to the cliff. And there are similar bits of logic, only as long as the number of directions there are for each location. Let's look at what that might look like. Each function will be for a specific location. It will need to know what direction the user has chosen, and it will need to return what location they're in after their choice. Let's write a function like that for the field called visit field. We write it up with the other functions. So def visit field open paren close paren colon. Now, when we have information that's coming into the function, information it needs to do its job, we put that between the parentheses. That's called a formal parameter, or often just parameter for short. Our function needs to know the direction the user wants to move. So we'll put between the parentheses direction of type string. I'll write a doc string. Return the player's new location based on direction they want to move. And let's have a variable called location of type string. And we'll give that a default value of field where we are now. I'll write annotate and initialize local variables over that. And then we just need an if statement. If they've chosen E, they move to the wood. L if they've chosen M, they move to the settlement. Now, if they've chosen S, the game is over. We need to figure out how that's going to work for our game. So let's call that game over for now. And we'll print the message about falling in the river and being swept out to sea. And if they've chosen W, 
then we're going to remain in the field, but we'll give them the message that it's an impassable cliff. I'll put a comment over all of that, determine the new location based on direction. Okay, so look that over for a moment. We're setting a variable called location, which will be the new place the player is located based on them starting in the field and choosing a direction. We're going to give it a default value of field, but if they chose east, north, or south, then they will be in a different location. Now we need to get that information back to our game loop. So we're going to write return location after the if statement. A return statement returns a value back to where the function was called. Not all functions return values, but many do, probably most. Functions generally take in some information, do something with it, and spit out a result. Once a function reaches a return statement, control returns back to where the function was called. So there shouldn't be any code after that. Any code after the return statement won't get executed. As a rule of thumb, if a function is returning something, put that in one return statement at the end of the function. If you find yourself trying to write multiple return statements or putting a return anywhere except as the very last statement, rethink the structure of your function. Now, if we're returning something, we want to document the data type that we're returning, and we do that in the function header. After the close parentheses, type dash close angle bracket, which looks like an arrow when you put them together, and then type str for string. The value that we're returning is a string. The colon goes after that. Okay, so how do we use a function that takes a parameter and returns a value? Down in the game loop, we're going to change our code to call this function if the player is in the field, and this function will just tell us where they are next. So after getting the user's choice, I'll start by making sure they haven't said they want to quit, although that isn't strictly necessary. I'll type if choice is not equal to Q. And then indented, I'll type if location equals field, colon, and then indented location equals visit field, in parentheses, choice. And let me just write elif location equals settlement, location equals visit settlement choice, elif location equals wood, colon, location equals visit wood, choice, and I'll delete the old logic. That is so much simpler, isn't it? We do have to write these two other functions, but notice that the whole game loop got really simple and obvious. Describe where we are, get the user's command, find out where we're going next. Now, there was one weird little thing. If they fall in the river, the game is over. And so location is equal to game over, if that's the case. So after the whole if elif block, forgetting the location, let's write if location equals game over, choice equals Q, which will end the game. I'll put a comment over that explaining that. If the game ended in one of the locations, set choice to Q. Now let's talk about the syntax and meaning of our call to our function and compare it to our function calls from the prior video. So previously, where we call print field description and the other location description functions, we just type the name of the function followed by parentheses. There's nothing in the parentheses because the function takes no parameters and we're not assigning the functions to a variable because the functions don't return any values. But in our new function calls, first, we're passing choice in to each function. 
I put choice between the parentheses. Now you might think that's weird because up in the function visit field, we haven't written the others yet. I'm taking a formal parameter called direction. So what's going on? Well, in the function, I need to know the direction the user wants to move or I can't figure out their new location. So direction makes sense as a name for that variable. Down in the game loop, I need to know the user's choice. It could also be called command. And that choice might be a direction, but it might also be Q for quit. So choice or command is a good name for that variable. We could add other commands like look or take or drop or inventory as we develop the game. So that's always going to be a command and only sometimes will the command be a direction. So the names for the variables each make sense in their own context. When we pass something into a function, like I'm passing choice here, we call that an actual parameter or argument. Let's call it an argument. Choice is an argument to the function visit field. It doesn't have to be a variable. I could always pass in the literal string n, for example, although that wouldn't make much sense. But the point is, it doesn't matter what the variable's called. What's going to happen is the value will be copied out of that variable and into the variable direction up in visit field. Direction is a separate variable. It's brand new. It's part of visit field. And choice is just telling Python what value to copy into that variable. Now remember that visit field is going to return the player's new location. For us to have access to the value being returned, we need to assign it into a variable here where we're calling it. So this is how the calling part of the program communicates with the function through arguments passed in as parameters and through the return value being assigned into a variable. If I don't assign the call to visit field into a variable, then I have no access to the value being returned. Now, technically, I could use it rather than store it in a variable, but I don't want to complicate this. You'll see examples of that, I'm sure. You can always assign into a variable and then use the variable. We can anthropomorphize the function to an extent. Think of it as a person. So here in the game loop, we're saying to the function visit field, hey, the user wants to go south. Where are they now? And the function saying, well, they're in game over now. But if we don't assign that into a variable, it's like we asked the question and then covered our ears while they were answering or walked away. So I'll go write the visit settlement and visit wood functions so we can play the game and just demonstrate that it still works and step through it in the debugger. I urge you to try to write these functions using the visit field function as a model while I'm writing them. Okay, be right back. Okay, I'm done. How did you do? This code is available on my GitHub repo. There's a link in the description. So you can download and look at the other two functions in detail there if you like. So first, if we run the program, We can see that we can still move around a bit. I'll try to move west, impassable cliff. I'll move east, wood, north, settlement, south, that's x, south, <laughs> field, south, river, and game over. Now let's watch it execute in the debugger, just some of it. I'll open the debugger. and rearrange my windows, and I'll put a breakpoint on the call to visit wood. And we'll run the program, and press go. And I'll move us into the wood by pressing E, and then I'll press N to get the program to stop. Now remember, if we want to go in and visit our function, we press step. Let's look first at our program state, the variables. We have location is wood and choice is n. Now I'll press step. Now, so far, there's only one variable in visit wood, the parameter variable direction, and that's n. The n was copied from choice 
into direction. Now let's press over and location is defined as wood. Now let's press over through the if statement. And we see location is changed to settlement. And then we're down at the return statement. And you can see location is equal to settlement. And that's what's being returned. It's the word after the keyword return. Now we'll press over. And we're back where the function was called, the first sequential line after. And if we look at the program state, we can see the assignment statement happened and location is now settlement. If you run this in pythontutor.com, the process of returning a value and assigning it happens a little more slowly and visibly. So you might want to run the program there yourself and take it line by line and make sure it makes complete sense. The passing of values between the function and the function call and the flow of control. Be patient with yourself. I don't know a beginning programmer who doesn't struggle with this at first, but it will make sense to you if you persist with it and keep practicing. So I will end this video here, and I urge you to practice with this. Try rewriting this program from scratch. If you added another location of your own after the previous video, maybe include it here as well by writing a visit function for it. I've included an auto-graded exercise in the description of this video so you can practice with the video code. Once you've mastered the concepts here, you're ready to move on.